Well, this is my first video of 2021, so I want to wish everyone a Happy New Year. I've been a little bit late because I've been working on some technical papers that have been taking a lot of my time. And this paper is about a question that someone left in the comments. And that's a good point that you can always leave questions in the comments and I'll try to do a video on it if you have a question about physics. Or anything else actually, I'll see if I can, I can do a video. But this video is about the number 1836 which isn't exactly 1836, but it's the ratio of the masses between the proton and electron. People want to know why is it we have this number 1836, why is there a difference in mass? Well, in order to answer a question, you first have to determine how do the protons and electrons have mass? Why is never really the proper question, it's how. And in the case of a proton, we know from scattering experiments that protons have a spherical shell at their charge radius. What people don't realize, unless they've read my paper, is that if you calculate the amount of zero point energy excluded by a shell with a reasonably uh, thick or thin diameter, based on quantum fluctuation wavelength, you get the mass of the proton. The proton's mass comes from the amount of zero-point energy excludes. It has nothing to do with Higgs boson or a Higgs field. It has to do with the zero-point field, the quantum field. And it has to do with how much energy is in the quantum field that's being displaced by the proton. And similarly, the electron is the same way. The electron has a quantum field structure that displaces more zero-point energy that gives us the electron's mass. But here, instead of having a radius that's around one femtometer, one times 10 to the minus 15 meters, the radius is half the Compton wavelength of the electron. Now, this is actually fairly easy to see if we look at the magnetic moments. If you look at the magnetic moment for the proton and you look at the equation, it's divided by mass. Well, what does mass have to do with magnetic moment? If you want to calculate magnetic moment classically, you need to know the charge and charge distribution. You need to know the velocity of rotation, and you need to know its radius at every given point. And those, those are the pieces of information you need. Magnetic moment has nothing to do with mass. And so what happens is that we're using the Compton wavelength. Mass is related to the Compton wavelength with Planck's constant and speed of light. And we're basically, instead of using mass, we're effectively using the Compton wavelength. So the speed of light is proportional to E, the charge, C, the speed of light, I mean the magnetic moment, E, the charge, C, the speed of light, and then R, the radius, which is based on the Compton wavelength. And that's where the magnetic moment comes about. Well, the proton's magnetic moment is equal to the, that formula at the charge radius, at the outermost charge radius. And the G factor is two. And the reason the G factor is two is because the quantum shell of the proton, as we know, is made of dipoles, and all these dipoles are rotating. But because dipoles are rotating, one charge positive on the outside is going one way, and the negative charge is going the other way. So you need to consider it, think, think of it as two spherical shells rotating in the opposite direction, which doubles the amount of uh, magnetic moment. So not only is the proton's mass due to this spherical shell of quantum charge, so is its magnetic moment, which tells us that we have this charge here. And the same thing is true with the electron. 
if you take the electron's mass out of the magnetic Bowman equation, substitute in the Compton wavelength, you find that the magnetic moment is related to the Compton wavelength of the electron, where you have E, C, Compton wavelength divided by 8 pi times a factor of 2, and that gives you the um, magnetic moment of the electron. So this is all straightforward. You have one big shell and one small shell, and they're both rotating at the speed of light. They're both limited by the speed of light, so the speed of light determines their size. Anytime you have a rotating object, its speed is going to be limited by the speed of light. The tip speed, the outermost tip, and you're talking sphere at the equator, is not going to be able to exceed the speed of light. So that's going to set a limit. You can rotate as fast as you want, and if, it, if it's something that grows like this conceivably could, it'll stop growing when you hit the speed of light boundary. And that's how the dimensions get set. And the dimensions being set at that boundary is what determines the mass. But the key is, why do we have two different sizes? Why is the electron so much larger at its Compton wavelength than the proton? It's charge radius. And, well, that can only be one thing, and that's the rate of rotation of the, the dipoles involved. That within the proton, protons are positive matter, and positive electric charge on one side of the dipole and native matter and native electric charge on the other side. While electrons have a different polarity, it's negative charge and positive matter on one side and positive charge and negative matter on the other side. And I like to think of any matter as being negative matter. It's a negative energy solution to Dirac's equation. And because of that, it, it actually looks and acts and behaves a lot like electric charge. Even though that's not something you're taught in school, if you actually study the physics, that's what pops out. And if you actually look, just look at Dirac's equation, it pops out. It's, it's a negative solution. It was always a negative solution. So it's always been a negative charge-like phenomenon. So we have two different types of dipoles. One is polarized faster, rotates faster, and forms protons. The other one rotates slower and forms electrons. And now I, I said I was going to give you the origin of the 1836 difference. Well, I don't know why one rotates slower than the other. I mean, it could be that you have different distributions of wavelengths, which cause different speeds of rotation. It could be something else related to the difference between electric charge and matter charge, matter any matter. You can, I did a little table here where you have plus and plus and minus and minus, and you see you get these four different charge polarities and two different dipoles. And that's where it comes from. But like I said, what is causing this different rate, different rate of polarization that leads to the mass difference? I haven't figured it out yet. And I'll do a video when I do. So I hope you appreciate this video and you've learned a little bit more about how the masses of the protons and electrons evolve. And yes, electrons do have a shell. They, Freeman Dyson figured out that there's electron degeneracy pressure, that you can't pack electrons together beyond a certain density. And that's because they actually occupy a real volume and they start pushing back. And that's also true, we see Compton scattering at the Compton wavelength, which indicates that electrons have some sort of large structure. But because it doesn't show up at normal uh, high energy scattering experiments. We think of it not having a structure at all. So its structure must be a quantum structure, just as we
proposed that a proton has a quantum structure. Anyway, I'll do one and another videos on electrons. I have done some in the past, so I'll link below. Uh, so anyway, I, once again, I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share it with your physicist friends. And then I have some books, and recently one on particle theory, Goodbye Quarks, the Onion Theory, that talks about this and talks about electrons and protons and how they're the same structure. And as well as, well as developing my Onion Theory of all the unstable resonances. So if you want to learn more, you can buy one of my books. And if you do that, I'm an independent, retired researcher. And uh, if you buy a book that helps me a little bit in my retirement, uh, buy me lunch one day. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you again with my next video. Bye.